Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And you know, Noah, we have been saying this, uh, I know I've been preached this since 1997, since I've been here. You have, were really birthed with the company in 1993. Same month, August. August of 93, since we've been a company, a PDMA Corporation, multi-technology, it's better to have multiple uh, data points pointing to the problem. Yeah, making big decisions on, on, on big, expensive motors, uh, you really want to be comfortable, increase your confidence, multiple technologies makes that happen. And this is a great case study where it really highlights the ability to do uh, both vibration and motor current signature analysis. So here's the problem. Uh, they feel that there may be a flat spot on the sleeve bearings. You know, this happens a lot. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, the false Brunelling that occurs in storage, and, and, and it's something you want to be aware of and, and be cautious with. So they did some high-resolution vibration data, and it revealed suspected rotor faults, so we followed up with MCA. And we're going to go through that data for you. Uh, before we get into it, it's a two-pole motor. We're always worried about two-pole motors, right, Noah? You know, they're the most difficult to analyze because of the close proximity to line frequency and speed. You know, they're, they're just difficult. And this is a big two-pole motor, an 800-horse spinning that fast. A lot of things can go wrong. Right, and if, that bar, if the bar flies out, there's a lot of force. And there's a lot a of centrifugal force, absolutely. So here's the initial vibration data. This is a 3x order of harmonic. Yeah, Vibration 101 says to look for that pole pass frequency sideband around your, you know, running speed and, and, and orders of harmonics of running speed. This happens to be at the three times. And so this is this is it, textbook 101. You can see the increase in amplitude historically at the top. It's, it's, it's worth taking very serious. And you can see it at 1x, 2x, 3x, or 4x. Correct. Now the next uh, sample, data, sample of data here is uh, we're showing uh, 0.72 hertz between the pole pass modulating. Right. This modulation is in a time domain more of it. And so it's basically when you think of a modulating, you know, vibration, th that actually shows it here in the time domain. And, and our current will do the same thing, modulate current at a specific frequency. Okay. So when we look at it from our perspective, now we've got vibration data. Now we have current signature analysis data. What is this showing us? Absolutely. So where vibration focuses on running speed, the, rotor, the, the current signature is going to focus on line frequency, in this situation 60 hertz, and that same 0.7 hertz sideband that showed up in vibration is also showing up in current. Yeah, so you can see a f almost, almost a 0.72 hertz difference. And we also, we always tell people go out to that fifth harmonic, it's very important, and why is that? You know, our tech support likes to see three indications of rotor defect before they make a call, it's just to make sure you're not sending this large motor in for false repair. That fifth harmonic is, is, is an area where we like to focus, which is a, a confirming piece of information that that, that, that broke, break in the, cr in the bar itself is really affecting the air gap flux. So let's do the checks, right? We have vibration telling us at the 3x order of harmonic there's an issue. We have motor current signature analysis with pole pass sidebands around fundamental frequency showing that there's an issue. Now we have fifth harmonic. That's three. That's three. So we come up to our fourth one. Now that's demodulation. And can I tell you that this demodulation, especially on large two-pole motors, is our number one indication for rotor defects. In demod, we're looking at the same current signal, but we're stripping out the line frequency information, which allows us to really focus in on that demod peak. And, of course, the amplitude of pain is at 0.3. And where is this one at? This is a 0.45. Another strong indication of rotor anomalies. Okay. So we take it to the shop, right? They pull the motor, and the growler didn't show anything. Is that normal? You know, we've been hearing this a lot from our service industry partners that, that depending on the uh, expansion and contraction of the rotor bars, when, it, when it's cooled down like in this state, it's possible that that rotor appears healed and that the growler may actually miss it. So it's never a guarantee but a good shop test that most com most shops will do. But the analysts felt confident. They they knew that there was an issue, so they asked them to just you know wipe away, uh, scrape away some of the paint, uh, the insulation on those rotor bars, and this is what they came up with. So it's pretty evidence that there's a little hairline crack that went through 
uh, the rotor bar. And this is a great catch early on in the development of the fault, right? Rather than waiting till the bar's trying to fly out of the slot, they're catching it early enough and seeing it early enough. Now, when this thing's up and running, that separation that you're seeing around that crack may be a lot bigger than it appears now. When it's cooled off, it's contraction, uh, it's pulling itself together, it doesn't look that bad. Right. So, you know, we often ask for our, uh, the financial side of things, right? Because that's how you justify your program. If you have a good reliability program, you're, you're justifying either financially or increase uptime or mean time between failure. But in this case here, the real positive outcome was you started to convince people that the technology was valuable. You know, there's a lot of companies struggling with struggling with the uh, corporate culture for reliability, and if and in sometimes a win like this, where you were able to confirm, hey, we saw it early, we stopped things from happening. We, you know, even if it's not a big financial immediate savings, just that win can make a huge difference in moving technology forward and being accepted by in, by the comp company's leadership. Right. So it doesn't always have to be financial. Sometimes the small things really are valuable. Uh, so. Once again, we thank you for your time, Noah, and we thank you for you, the audience, your time in listening to us. And as always, if you have a different, if you have some information or a case study that you think would be valuable for us to share, please, by all means, send it to us. And until then, you guys stay safe out there and you have a great day.